here we're going to get the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is where we have an integral from a to b, and we're taking the antiderivative of a continuous function f of f, f of x, at least on that interval from a to b, dx. What we're going to do first is take the antiderivative. So we'll call it capital F of x. But instead of just putting a plus c on the end and calling it a day, we're going to evaluate from a to b, which means we're going to plug in f of b, our upper bound, minus f of a, our lower bound. So there's our fundamental theorem, which says you can take the antiderivative, plug in your upper bound minus your lower bound. And our answers for this are going to look completely different than they were for indefinite integrals when it didn't have bounds. The answer is a number instead of a function. Instead of ending with like 1 over 2 x to the 2 plus c, it's going to be a number that is net area. So instead of using Riemann sums to find area under the curve, a definite integral like this will find it for us perfectly without having to go through finding all the subintervals and taking such a long process. So on the page before, we just used three subintervals and did a left Riemann sum of x squared plus 1 on the interval from 1 to 10 and a right Riemann sum for that same function on that interval. Our left Riemann sum was 2 of 7. Our right Riemann sum was 5 of 4. They pretty much completely disagreed with each other on what the area under the curve was because we didn't use enough subintervals, which still felt like a lot of work just having three subintervals. So now let's find the perfect answer without having to use a Riemann sum. So first thing we would do is we would integrate. So x squared, 2 plus 1 is 3, so we'd have 1 over 3, x to the 3. Antiderivative of 1 would be 1x. And then instead of having a plus c, we're going to have an evaluation bar from 1 to 10. So when we take any antiderivative from now on, I'm going to think, do I want a plus c or do I have an evaluation bar? based upon whether the integral has bounds or not. This one does. So I need to grab my calculator. The fundamental theorem says just plug in your upper bound. 1 third of 10 cubed plus 10, plugging in both those x's, minus plug in your lower bound. 1 third of 1 cubed plus 1. So we would plug in each bound into our calculator. You might need to put 1 third in parentheses since it's a fraction. So you have parentheses 1 third and then parentheses 10 cubed plus 10, which is going to give you 343.3 repeating, minus doing 1 third in parentheses times 1 cubed plus 1 is going to give you 1.3 repeating. So when you subtract them, you get 342. There's the perfect area under the curve was actually 342. So both of our estimates were pretty far off. The left rim on sum was too small at 207. The right rim on sum was too big at 504. They were way off from the answer because we didn't have enough subintervals. But now we have this shortcut where we know that the definite integral measures the net area under the curve.